Hi, Yarnabees. Hi, Yarnabees. Okay, yes, <laughs> rare guest appearance by Crochet B, official medical consultant. Um, so we have Dang. some. Hold on. The mailman's here. <laughs> okay. So we have some very good news and, and some sort of good news, bad news. I'll have to explain. Uh, but first, we've had a number of new subscribers. So just so you're in the loop, we're going to do a quick synopsis. And this is all about um, Sandy's sister, Charlene. So uh, on the 21st of January, um, I got a call from Sandy. I was on my way home from Duncan on a, on a carpet cleaning job. And she was concerned because no one had been able to get a hold of her sister who lives in Crofton, which is on the way home. Um, so her husband had been calling, calling, she hadn't been answering, so he was getting a little worried about her because she'd not been uh, feeling well. She um, had a lot of headaches and a lot of issues and she'd been seeing the doctors for a few weeks. They'd even done a CT scan on the 19th trying to figure out uh, what's happening with her and they'd put her on some prednisone, which is a very strong drug and it was affecting her uh, really weird. So. At any rate, Sandy wanted me to drop by on the way home and uh, check on her sister. And I got there and uh, she wasn't answering the door. So we got a key from the neighbor and I went in and I found her uh, lying on the floor in her bedroom. So pretty scary. Um, I managed to get her up and get her moving and she was um, very disoriented, very totally out of it, almost like she was drunk or on on a really powerful drug and this was all from this prednisone so I had to get her up so we thought so we thought so I had to get her up get her on the couch I wasn't sure uh, what was up so I called her husband and uh, he said well it's, we thought that it was just the drug and that it was gonna eventually work its way through but he was gonna come home from work um, so I asked if he wanted me to wait for him and he said no to leave her with the neighbor and anyway, I went home and then three hours later, we got a phone call uh, from her husband saying that he was taking her by ambulance to the hospital, which was a bit of a shock. And then um, we got her to the, the hospital in Duncan and they immediately did another CT scan and they found um, a lot of fluid on her brain and there was something happening with her brain. So next thing we know, they're taking her by ambulance to the hospital in Victoria which is our capital city here on the island. It's about an hour and a half from our place. And um, they took her there and then they immediately decided they had to do some brain surgery to release the fluid from her brain and get the pressure on her brain. So obviously scary, scary stuff. Um, and she's been in the hospital in Victoria ever since. So they relieved the pressure on her brain and then they found when they did another MRI, they found something that looked very much like um, like cancer and a tumor uh, on her brain. So they went in. They found a few. They found a few all scattered throughout her brain that they thought were most likely lymphoma. So we've been sitting here dreading the fact that uh, Charlene has brain cancer and that, uh, you know, she was going to die and all of this stuff and we were very concerned because I've been through this with my brother who had a brain tumor and we just didn't really know exactly what we were dealing with and the doctors also seemed somewhat confused and um, they have did a biopsy, we've been waiting for results and all of that and while all this has been going on of course uh, we've been talking about it online, Sandy has on on the videos and trying to keep you guys apprised and uh, we've been absolutely overwhelmed with the response we've had from all of you guys. I mean, thousands of uh, well wishes, people praying, people doing all sorts of things, Don't and even me. and even more tangible. And you know, you hate to always bring money into it, but of course, when you're sick, the bills still come in. And and um, Charlene is the main breadwinner in the family. Her husband is only working part time and their bills have been stocking up and people have started donating money and things that are very very helpful so at any rate the good news is finally after all this waiting around uh, they've determined that it actually is not cancer so she does not have 
cancer. It's not uh, malignant growth. It's not going to get bigger. Um, it's not going to kill her. Uh, but she does have a, something that's somewhat strange as well. She has a condition called Wegener's syndrome. W-E-G-E-N-E-R-S. And what it is, it's a very rare autoimmune disease that causes inflammation throughout the body. Most often it manifests in the lungs and kidneys, uh, but you can have it in the brain. It is a very serious uh, situation. It used to be back in the 70s, if you had this, you usually died within six months. Um, they now have come up with treatment for this. So after all this time, we have finally found a specialist in Victoria that knows what it is and what to do so um well the good news is it's not cancer the bad news is it's still a very serious thing um so what's going to be happening is she will be going on um, some very aggressive drugs that will get rid of the inflammation and um, start to clear this up and we're hoping that sometime by next week she will be back out of the hospital but um it's still a long road back. She will have to get regular treatment. So it's very similar to um, having somebody that needs to get chemo or somebody that needs to get dialysis. She'll have to go every two months to a clinic to have this intravenous um, drug put through her system to, um, to stop the inflammation, um, deal with the syndrome, and hopefully eventually get it to a manageable level. Um, she still has some serious issues. Her vision is not good. Um, she is still very v fatigued. So um, she's still probably, you know, a few months away until she will hopefully be well enough to go back to work again. We don't really know. If she can. If, or maybe not ever. We still don't know at this point. But um, the good news is we finally know exactly what it is we're contending with. And the good news is it is a treatable situation and they're discovering more stuff all the time with this. So um, once they get it, they basically get it to a certain point where it's almost in remission and then it becomes a manageable situation where people can leave a fairly normal life depending on how well it goes. And That's best case scenario. Best case scenario. And, uh, but it's something where she will literally have this, you don't get rid of this, you have it forever. Um, they can get it into a manageable state so that you can function. Hopefully, Hopefully as a normal person, we're being able to work and, and live your life as best you can. Uh, but it's something that she will always have to be monitored and she'll always have to um, be, be looked at. So luckily we have found a, a good doctor, I think, that understands this because we've been asking how come nobody seems to know what the hell is going on with her and apparently um, this guy says the regular doctors just have no clue when it comes to this stuff because it is such a rare thing. So, um, just like our sister-in-law, she can't have a normal disease. She's got to have something crazy and exotic and goofy. Uh, but so we're obviously we're very relieved that it's not cancer, but we're concerned with you know the next little while as far as um, you know getting her back to where she's okay. So, I mean, she still needs our help. She still. Um, needs our support um, so we're going to continue to go on Sandy has got her plans in terms of um, raffling her sweaters and things that we can do to try to continue to raise some funds for Charlene going forward because unfortunately the bills continue as that's life right um, but um, she's going to be on um, the medication that she's going to be getting is extremely extremely expensive um, but luckily, luckily we live in Canada <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah she's gonna have some support medically through um, uh, extended medical thank goodness but uh, what else she's gonna need we don't know um, and this medication is very similar to uh, chemo where she's gonna be very very fatigued like weak as a kitten um, she may get lesions um, there's a lot of different things that may happen to her the weakness is a definite she's already she's walking with a walker but she's very unsteady and it's just gonna get worse the, the first 
um, session with this medication is going to throw her for such a huge loop. Uh, and my sister is not the kind of person that takes stuff laying down. This one she may have to. Um, she's going to be completely con out of control of what's going to happen. And that's... It's going to be very hard. Well, it's going to be a long road back, but at least... It, there is a road back. So we went from thinking that we were going to lose her altogether to at least we now know what we have to contend with. There's a plan. There's somebody that seems to be on the case that knows what he's doing. And, you know, with, uh, you know, God's help and everybody's prayers and everything, she will eventually uh, get back to being hopefully the way she was before. She'll never be totally cured. She'll never be 100% okay, but she will be getting better than what she is now. And we're going to be there with her every step of the way, of course, uh, supporting her in any way we possibly can. And um, and I guess that's really all we have to tell you. There's not much more that we know. We know exactly what the disease is. And, of course, when you read up on it, you know, they give you all the worst-case scenarios and the horror stories and and everything else they talk about all the side effects and we don't know if she'll have any of the side effects or none of the side effects or all of the side effects we do know that she'll have the fatigue in the beginning where she'll have luckily her daughter will be with her for the first little bit to get her over that hump uh, the other thing that's really shitty in Charlene's case is she lives in a three-story apartment building and has to go up three stories worth of stairs there is no elevator to get into her place. Um, her vision is still affected. They don't know definitively how well that's going to come back. It is improving. They think that it will get better, but she may be in a scenario where she won't be able to drive anymore, and that we don't know yet either. Um, but um, the good news is it's not cancer, so for all of you that were praying, please don't let it be cancer. Thank you. Um, Thank you. We are very happy that it's not cancer because that's a death sentence. This is not a death sentence, uh, but it is, it's a difficult road. So it, It's not a death sentence, but they said that it will probably shorten her lifespan. Um, whether that means that she could have lived to be 100 and she's only going to live to be in her 80s, we don't know. And it's an ever-evolving thing. They're constantly... Like I said, in the 1970s, this was six months and you were dead. And they've progressed from that to where now, you know, 80% of the people are still alive 10 years later or, or longer. Um, they're coming up with new things all the time. Of course, we're constantly hearing about um, gene therapy and stem cells and things like that that are radically changing the face of medicine as we know it as well. So... But at least what we have is we have a plan of action. We have somebody in charge that seems to know um, about this disease and how to manage it and how to treat it. Um, luckily, her doctor is in Victoria, which is only a 45 to an hour drive from where they live. So it's not like having to get on a ferry and go to Vancouver and things like that. So it's relatively accessible. He's given us his phone number. He's willing to take any phone calls. Um, we need, and it sounds like we've got the right the right man in charge finally, uh, which is often a problem here in Canada. We have wonderful health care, but uh, everybody seems to always be booked, booked, booked. So, um, and anyway. also, um, in the last three years or so, um, so many things have been happening to Charlene that we did not know what was we had no idea what was going on the doctors didn't know what was going on she lost her hearing uh, most of her hearing they put tubes in her ears they said she had inflammation but they didn't know where it was um, she had a persistent cough for months um, like just like headaches and like this has been going on now for a few years these are all symptoms things. of this disease that we had no idea we and neither did the doctors because this again this disease was first diagnosed in 1931 it's very rare it's one of the rarest of autoimmune no it? no 1931 it's the rarest of one of the rarest of all autoimmune diseases um 
it's just one of those weird weird things that happens to people sometimes so luckily now we have a definitive diagnosis and and a treatment plan in place and we're getting on with that so she will be starting this um on friday, this stuff friday. on friday uh they're going to keep her probably in the hospital for the first four or five days while she goes through this intravenous um, thing i think michelle said she's going to be in the hospital for a few more weeks because they because she's going to be so weak and um and because she's going to be so susceptible to infections um, and she's already got a bladder infection or a urinary tract infection or something so they're keeping an eye on that um, because of all this stuff and because of where she lives they're going to keep her uh, until she's strong enough to maybe possibly get up those stairs they've been taking her to physiotherapy and making her do stairs and stuff but it's <sighs> it's either that or i have to carry her up <laughs> um yeah. so but she's yeah she's gonna have she's such a strong personality um it's this is gonna be rough on her this is gonna be really rough on her well it's good though too though because she's not a wuss and she's not a quitter and no, um she's gonna she's, fight she's a fighter and she will but she'll have to listen to the doctors which yeah. not always my strong suit either um yeah. so you know but the good news is there's a support system in place she's got her daughter she's got us and her husband of course and a doctor in victoria that's uh, that's totally on this and is even as we speak he's reviewing like uh, all the stuff with her hearing loss because her hearing loss is very likely due to this so there's a good chance that if we get this uh, manage that maybe she'll get her hearing back which oh, would be, be so nice. really really nice because she's had a really hard time with that so yeah. yeah it's you know it's one of those things that if you're a fan of uh of the show house he would probably would have been the guy that would have figured it out and it sounds like we've got our own doctor house in victoria so we're very grateful that he's finally finally on the case and seems to know what's going on and quite honestly um charlene has had very good care you know, it's easy to be critical of the doctors, but as soon as we got her to Duncan, she was immediately in Victoria, brain surgery immediately. They didn't beat around the bush. She's been in a fantastic intensive care unit where the nurses and the doctors have taken care of her 24 seven. So, you know, we're very grateful for all of that. We're lucky. Uh, fortunately, we live fairly close to our, our capital city here in BC, which is the best hospitals are in Vancouver and Victoria. So luckily we weren't too far away on our little island here. She was wow. able to get there. We, so. we have what's called, it's called the Malahat and it's like a mountain. And um, so going over that, if it's snowing or whatever, it's it, so many lives have been lost on that road. It's insane. Sandy so has a rare disease. She's not able to drive if there's a snowflake anywhere within the atmosphere. <laughs> no. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> my van is parked in yeah. the minute there's a snowflake. The good news is I can get there in my van. So, yeah. <laughs> but he's um, always working. So. Well, not always. It's, wow. it's, it's been pretty slow. But, yeah, uh, lately. We're in sort of almost like the off season for carpet cleaning. A lot of people don't want to do it in january february because the weather's cold and wet here and people prefer to have better weather so i'm that's why i'm home because normally i'd be out working but i'm yeah. in that whole stewing and wishing i had a job phase that sandy goes through every year where i drive her crazy yeah but uh anyway so we are relieved of course we're concerned with um what all this means going forward and we don't want things to be too difficult for charlene and all of that but we're we're, we're really happy that it's not cancer and that at least it's a, a treatable condition and something that can be dealt with and there's a positive uh, plan of action. At least we can do something instead of the worst is the waiting around, not, uh, not knowing what it is or what's going to happen. And we're through all of that and we're very grateful for that and we're very grateful uh, for all of you guys and everything you've done uh, if just from the cards and, and the well wishes and the prayers and you know i'm always i'm not a big praying guy I've, i tend to believe in taking action and not you know hoping for somebody to do everything for you but i guess maybe you guys are proving me wrong and there is something to all this sort of stuff and uh mm -hmm. you know positive vibes are positive vibes however they come and the donations have been fantastic like charlene is the kind of person that is very conscious of 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 her bills and her financial situation and she's not even out of the hospital and she's 
wanting her laptop to see if the bills have been paid and yeah. and all of that and just knowing that uh, we've given her some relief on that front is going to really help her a lot uh, with her health not worrying about money so much and uh, you know we've given her a little bit of a cushion now with uh, that will help her and uh, we're going to do the whole raffle thing um, we're still trying to figure out the best way to do that um, maybe you guys can give us some feedback on that my belief is um, we don't know what the response is going to be so I think we should um, have all of her cardigans all eight or nine of them or whatever available and just sell the tickets and whoever wins the raffle can choose the sweater of their choice mm -hmm. and if it's really successful and people want to do another raffle we can continue going forward uh, Sandy was thinking about raffling them off one at a time and I don't know if there's going to be that much interest um, from everybody going forward um, so I think we'll start with my idea just to give it a bit of a test run so when we're ready um, and we're getting to work on that I think my suggestion was if people PayPal'd us, uh, is it going to be $5? Yeah. $5 for a ticket and the winner can choose any of the sweaters of, of uh, their choice and um, we'll, do, we'll run it for a two week period. So when you PayPal us the money, we will get back to you and give you a number. So we're going to go like one, two, three, four. So you will know your whatever number you are. And then we're only going to put, we're going to keep track of names and numbers in a book. We're going to put all the numbers in a... No. Bar, no. 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 I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use an app. And the app is a number generator. Right. Okay. So depending on how many tickets we have, say we've got 50 tickets that are sold. Um, I'm going to put from 1 to 50 in the app. Hit the button. It's the same app that Tia used when uh, we were doing the Q and A, okay. and uh, it'll come up with a random number. Something we can hopefully show on the. Tape. Oh yeah, for sure. So we'll show it on the camera, so you know that it's all on the up and up. And of course, we wouldn't fudge it anyway. But we want everybody to know that you know it's a random thing. Uh, we were going to get Price Waterhouse to supervise, but they're busy with the Oscars <laughs> this week, so they weren't available. <laughs> And Deloitte and Touche should do show. We don't want to do that either. So <laughs> anyway, we'll find the best way we can do it. If we get a tremendous response, um, we'll ask you again after the first one if um, you wish to participate, continue to participate in another raffle as well. And then we'll have the other eight remaining sweaters or there's been some interest in Sandy uh, making a mask to be raffled. If enough of you are interested in getting one of our masks. Yeah, um, a lot of people. Or a Scooty or any of the many things that Sandy creates with all this wonderful yarn that populates every corner of my house. Um, <laughs> whatever works. And every penny that we generate will go towards um, Charlene and helping her down the road because um, we're not sure... What's going to happen with her on the money front? I know we have a system in Canada where you get uh, medical unemployment insurance, but it's only a portion of, of your wage. It's not your full wage. And we're not sure what she gets in terms of sick benefits from her job or any of that stuff. But if any of you have been on anything like that, you know that it's nowhere near enough uh, for, for your bills and stuff. I mean, they have a mortgage and they're like us. They got a mortgage and bills and hydro and you know, car payments, and they're just normal people like us, right? So anything that we can do to help um, would be greatly appreciated, and believe me, it would it would help them a great deal. So Yeah, you guys have helped us so much already. And we hate to keep asking, but she keeps yeah. needing, right? So yeah. and I don't, I don't want her to have to do this alone. So if I, if, if it, you know, I donate my time to make this stuff, and and if you guys are wanting it then great you know um i am more than happy to um to do the raffle and uh, and you can win a hundred dollar sweater for a five dollar yeah. raffle ticket yeah that's the thing right like these these sweaters would go for 90 to 120 dollars on etsy and you pay five dollars. It's forty to fifty dollars worth of yarn in yeah. a lot of these sweaters. So you know. Yeah. So it's, I mean, it's a great deal for you guys, right? And uh, and it really really helps out a lot. So I really hope that you guys 
participate and I will keep making sweaters for as long as you guys want to do this and uh or if you want to do a mask or, or one of our scooties i've had people ask for scooties um hat and cowl sets the masks um uh pfft. crochet b crochet yeah maybe. Or raffle I, me off should i raffle him off <laughs> 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 um so you know like keep keep the ideas coming and um yeah let's see how how this goes so that's our update. I hope, I, hopefully, it wasn't too confusing. We're still trying to rational, you know, figure it all out too, and what it all yeah. means and everything. So, uh, you know, keep a good thought, keep the prayers coming, and all of that stuff. Of course, if anybody wants to make a donation, they're still more than more than uh, grateful for that. Um, I'll leave but, the link. Down um, below. We'll leave the link below for that. So donations will will still be gratefully accepted and forwarded to Charlene. And then anything that comes in on on the PayPal, that's a five dollar amount. We will assume will be for the raffle. Oh yeah. So um, when the time comes, when we actually say yes, I'll I'll do a separate video, and it will say the raffle, raffle. is open for business yeah. once and we're so, organized. Yeah. So once yeah. that video comes out, then I will start accepting. Um, It'll be in the next the, day or two. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's yeah. not going to be very long. Um, but also when you do the PayPal payment, there's a place to do a comment and make sure that you put on there whether or not this is a donation or whether or not it's for the raffle. And Just, an email address so you can get back to yes, them, right? Yes. And so for we can those give you your you, number so you know what your number is. Yeah. For those of you that have made a donation, thank you so, so, so much. Um, what Michelle and Charlene are going to be doing is sending out thank you cards and Michelle had my niece Michelle has made little hearts that she's she crochets as well so she's crocheted up a whole bunch of hearts and they're going to be putting them in these cards and Charlene is going to be putting a personal note in these cards so what I need is for those of you that have donated I need you to email me at crochetacanada.com no, crochetacanada at gmail.com. I will put it right here. Uh, I need your address, okay? I will be going through all the PayPals and I will be looking at the uh, emails that I do have. Some of them aren't working, so I don't know how to get a hold of some of you. So that's why I want to put it out there now. Uh, if you have donated, uh, please contact me. Okay. <laughs> Say bye, Crochet B. Bye, I have an urgent mission. <laughs> so, yes, so email me and let me know your address and then I can pass it on to Charlene and Michelle and we can get these cards out to you. And please, please don't send me messages saying, oh, you don't have to do that. Um, this is something that my sister and Michelle really want to do for you, okay? So, like I said, I will email out as many email as many of you as I can, provided that those emails from PayPal work. Um, if I have not emailed you and you have made a donation, let me know. Okay, email me. I have a whole list of the people that have donated and their email addresses. Okay, so when you email me, I will put it up against that list and make sure that you're on my list. And then we can get you, get you your special card. Okay, so thank you guys so much. We so appreciate everything that you've done and, and will continue to do for us. Um, and we will get on that raffle like in a couple days. <laughs> okay, so I love you all. And I will talk to you guys soon. Okay, bye.